Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, and now that Jimmy and Kimmy are a Gus Fring of the past, I thought we'd, we'd not only get off to a bad start with the puns, but also discuss Better Call Saul's latest entry. The season is ramping up to its final few episodes, and we have a big plot development in this one, with us finally learning how our star-crossed lovers went their separate ways. I know every single season ending explain that I've done for the show has started with me talking about how Jimmy is dead and it's the rise of Saul Goodman, but here it actually feels like that's the case from the opening shot. Though he's practiced under this name before, knowing what we do come the end, it's likely that this opening of the door and planning of the sign cements Jimmy going on the path that we always knew he would. Now this opening shot is filled with fitting imagery of the mundane, mixed with the more horrifying aspects of their lives. They are of course just trying to act natural and go through the routines involving the usual things, like Bill Oakley getting a crap cup of coffee whilst he makes a deal with one of them. However, mixed in with this we also get Howard's blood being wiped up, which is faded into Jimmy wiping up sauce. Mike digs bullets out of walls, makes literal bullet points, has the new fridge filled up, and overall it feels like everything is back to normal, which is even more terrifying when you think about it. This idea of the devastation is clearly shown in Kim, who returns home and immediately drops her character. The death of a man in their apartment shouldn't be something that they can just sweep under the rug, even if they manage to literally do that. Jimmy tries to see the positives and says that there will come a day where they won't think about it at all, but we can see from Kim's face that she'll never forget. Title Fun and Games, this of course has several meanings to it. Obviously, it's meant to evoke a feeling of happiness, like they managed to break away from the severity of everything due to Lalo now being dead. However, the full saying is normally along the lines of it's all fun and games until someone gets hurt. Both Jimmy and Kim were happy manufacturing controversies to bring Howard down, and initially they saw the humour in this. However, after he was shot and killed, it's all ended up bringing the joy that they found come crashing down. Now elsewhere, Gus travels out to Don Eladio's compound, where he meets with the other heads. He don't have anything to worry about. He don't have anything to worry about, as Lalo's tape in which he went off on Eladio now belongs to him, but I love how this is almost Cold War feeling to the entire meeting. What Better Call Saul does brilliantly is that it brings a sterile feeling to a lot of the scenes due to its direction. Though Jimmy is charismatic to a fault, characters like Mike and Gus are very, very reserved, and clearly in a constant state of deep thought trying to work out the angles. Though he seems calm and collected, Gus wants nothing more than to smash Eladio's head in like it's that thumbs up button. Also, you know for a fact, yeah, Hector and Eladio would also ring that notification bell. <laughs> anyway, enough of begging for likes. There sits Juan Bolsa, Hector Salamanca, and the cousins Marco and Lionel. Accusations are flying about with Hector of course well aware that Gus was behind the mercs that attacked Lalo's home. Hector wants Eladio to look into Gus's eyes and come to the realisation that he hates him. Weirdly, Eladio later says in the scene that he recognises this, but he clearly views Gus as being such a big money maker that he's willing to let it slide. Expertly directed here, we see Gus's stern outlook barely changes, but in the reflection of his glasses we can catch the fire burning, symbolising how he wants to set fire to the entire thing. Gus doesn't even want to respond, and due to all his planning and prep throughout the season, Hector is simply seen as a crazy old man, bitterly twisted by his thirst for revenge. This planning and prep was of course seen in Howard's cleanup, and thanks to Mike, every angle is covered. Gus is clearly won, and he even comes out on top and gains more territory than before. Now a mirroring of the past and future comes heavy in the closing of the scene, with Gus standing at the edge of the poolside. This is the exact same spot where his partner's body was slumped over, and he was forced to look into his cold dead eyes. This motif of having to stare into the lifeless face of someone whose death you somewhat caused was also mirrored in Walt looking into Hank's face. This was also then brought up in the last episode, with Jimmy coming face to face with Howard's corpse. The characters are always lying down so they can stare directly into the other's eyes, and these deaths are always defining for each person. Now this pool is also where Eladio would end up after Gus and Axe's final plan against him, and as they say, and It's all connected. Now Gus returns home, and we discover that Howard's death did rouse suspicion. However, it seems like they bought this story, and for now, the case is closed. Kinda have my theories that the series might culminate with Jimmy being arrested, potentially even with Howard's death being thrown in there too, or he might finally grow conscience and let the truth come out. Walt died, Jesse escaped, and I think the close for him would be great if it ended up with Jimmy going to jail. Saying that though, I'd love it if he managed to escape too, so who knows, Kim might even snitch on him, and hey, 
might happen and leave your theories below on where you think it's going. Now in a more personal moment, we see Gus and a sommelier named David bonding over a bottle of red wine. Throughout Breaking Bad, there were theories that he was in a relationship with Max and that's why his death meant even more to the character than just being the one of a friend. He could stay there and even invite him back to share an extra expensive bottle, but he leaves whilst David goes to get one to show him. Now this has a number of reasons to it and he clearly knows that he can't have a personal life because getting attached to anyone would put them in danger. Throughout Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, we've seen as the rich characters like Walt and Gus have to live humbly so that they don't attract attention. Gus knows that bringing in anyone would alert them to his operations as even his home is a base that connects to others under a network of tunnels. Gus can't live lavishly or let anyone in and thus he leaves. Now this idea of being unable to be Flash is juxtaposed by the end of the entry which we'll talk more about in just a bit. In that we catch up with Saul circa Breaking Bad in the lavish mansion that was shown at the start of episode 1 in this season. He even has a golden toilet and can clearly show this off because he's obtained it using quote unquote legal means. Swear that's not a pun. Now Gus has truly destroyed any chance of having a personal life and elsewhere we get a touching moment with Mike. He tells Nacho's father the truth about his son's death and he promises justice. However, his father questions this, instead suspecting that what he really means is revenge. At Howard's memorial service, we see several photos of him having fun and though we hear all the kind words, it's clear his reputation has been destroyed. Even the law firm is getting renamed due to Howard and Chuck being gone, showing how much Saul destroyed their legacies. Jimmy being gone along with them is also cemented by Rich, who calls him Saul instead of his name. Jimmy, uh, Saul. Now the pair both go to Howard's wife Cheryl, who refuses to shake Jimmy's hand, and she goes off on him for the harassment that he carried out. She also gets him to say what he told the police, and though he goes into his BCS mode, or BS mode, he's unable to hoodwink her. This is when Kim steps forward for the final time, and ever the pro, delivers a devastating story that will forever destroy Howard in Cheryl's eyes. Due to the setup earlier in the season, Cliff of course also witnessed something similar, and sadly it puts the final nail in his proverbial coffin, that means no one will remember him as how he was. In the car park, I feel like it finally comes to an end between Kim and Jimmy, with this beautiful line before it being used to set up their standing. It's over. I mean, really over. Kim says nothing, she just gives Jimmy a kiss and withdraws from the law profession itself. Now, Jimmy being unable to convince another woman is seen in his attempt to tell Kim to stay with him and continue being a lawyer. However, much like Cheryl, she sees through the lies and deceit and no longer wants to be part of it. After coming to the realization that both enable the other to be their worst selves, she wants to get out of it. She reveals that she knew Lala was alive and that she didn't tell him because of his PTSD. She knew that that would make them break up and she was having too much fun, but now the fun and games are over. Now either way, it's devastating, heartbreaking, and she finally accepts that they are poison. Whatever way you cut it, they led to a good man's death and in his place rises another good man. A hey, Saul Goodman, baby. Now at this point, we get a major time jump in the series with Saul waking up in the mansion that was taken apart at the start of the first episode. At his side is a lady of the night and he wakes up to the sound of Journey singing any way you want it. Bit on the nose, but I'll allow it. Now his entire life has turned to a hollow and materialistic existence in which there's no real love or care. Rather than making breakfast for Kim, he's now offering breakfast bars and everything including his hair is now on the decline. I love this little comb over shot and we even had a clip that focused on his hair medication in episode 1. Jeans is thinning massively on the top and the hair loss progression is some nice attention to detail. Now when this takes place, we don't know exactly but it's likely either during Breaking Bad or just before the events of the show. Saul's lawyer up plate has November 05 dated on it and his barking badge has 08, which is when the original show started. Gone is his classy sign from the beginning and it's replaced by a tackier one with the inflatable Statue of Liberty there. We end with him sitting at his desk and putting down his world's best lawyer mug as he waits for his first client of the day. Throughout the series, we've had the world's best lawyer flask that ended up getting second written on it. This was because Kim was the first, however, with her now out the picture, everything has fallen on Saul, who's now seen as the top one. In his desk, we also see the matchbooks, which were important items in Breaking Bad. This shot is of course deliberately set up to mirror the one with Gus, earlier with a glass of wine, and there's a real sense of tragedy to it. The pair both put their work above everything else and are now alone because of this. Now it's a brilliant way to close out the entry, and come the next one, I'm actually expecting Walt and Jesse to show up. 
I don't know if we'll ever revisit the Better Call Saul timeline, but it does make sense that we're gone from that now, due to the events of the previous entry, and also this one. With Lalo's death happening, it would be pointless to hang around there, and I'm interested to see if this recontextualizes the main show. It would be great if we heard things about the mysterious Heisenberg, and saw from Gus's point of view how we learn about Walt in more detail. There's going to be lots of things to look forward to, and if you enjoy the video, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Also, just to let you know, I've featured in a video talking about all the movies that you need to watch before Nub comes out, which will be linked on screen right now. Now, we are also running a competition and giving away three copies of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness on the 15th of August, and all you have to do to be one of the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe and notifications on, and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the episode. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month, and the winners of the last one are on screen right now, so if that's you, then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want some else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of episode 8, which will be linked on screen right now. We talked about all the subtle things in it, how it all kind of ties together, and just why the death of Lalo is so impactful. If not, then hopefully I see you on the next one. Hope you enjoyed the video as well. You take care of yourself. Peace.